Welcome to Marshall Knows Stuff. I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. Now I realize I said that I was going to give up on the blacksmithing videos here in a minute, but uh, I've just got so many ideas and I still have a ton of railroad spikes left. So I'm going to use some of those up on some of these ideas. So I get these ideas, and like I usually say, I like you to be able to tell what it was to begin with whenever I'm done with the project. Railroad spikes lend themselves to this pretty well because even if you don't keep the head, you can keep the, uh, the shaft of the spike, and you can still tell what it is pretty well. Uh, this new project, though, I have an idea, and this just ended up being the right amount of metal in the right places to do it. With all this steel up at the head of the spike, I think I can hammer that out to where I can get a slot out of that and then also bring the rest of this spike out and down to where I can make a bearded axe or a viking axe. So uh, this episode I'm going to attempt to turn a railroad spike into a viking axe. Let's get our viking on. Okay, so... Now I've got my idea for my project, now I need to come up with my specific goal. What I'm doing now is I'm looking through my box of railroad spikes here and I'm going to come up with a long and thick shaft because I have a feeling that I'm going to need as much steel as possible on the uh, axe blade itself. Not only do I need to uh, flatten and draw out, but I also have to come all the way down with the axe, flatten that and draw that out. So I think I picked myself a winner. This one's got a pretty straight and thick shaft already. And it looks like that head has not deteriorated very much either. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, getting the rust off of this one. The forge is going already. By the time I'm done with that, the forge will be ready. So I'm going to start heating this thing up. And I think what I'm going to do first is hammer out the head. The head will be strong enough to withstand the heat that I give it from drawing this out and this down. So we'll get to cleaning that up and throw it in the forge. Here we go. There we go. About five minutes with a wire wheel and it's nearly restored to its original majesty. It has a stamp on the head. It always makes me wonder like uh, what they mean and where they come from and whether or not I'm turning something actually valuable into uh, just another piece of junk that I'm going to be messing with. <laughs> but uh, if you're curious about what I use, <clears throat> I just get these uh, wire wheels and I use like uh, the speed number two on my drill, on my trusty Milwaukee. And uh, I just get that going and it scrubs all that stuff right off. It, uh, the rust doesn't really stand a chance against it. And that way I'm not uh, pounding some of that uh, iron oxide into my good carbon steel. So after about a, an hour of hammering on this, uh, not too long, you can uh, see kind of where I'm going with it. Uh, the head I'm turning into the, the cheeks right here. Uh, I need to be careful about uh, how thin this is going to be. I only want about 3 16 on each side of the cheek. Uh, the cheeks, if they get too, too uh, thin, then it's not going to be a stable axe. And uh, I... Also notice there's like a little hairline here where the railroad head, when I was hammering the nose into the chin here, it made those little hairlines in there. So I'm going to fill that with flux and uh, hopefully that will weld itself together as I'm hammering it. Once I get all that done, I'm going to uh, drive a chisel through the top to make the eye, but I'm going to be offsetting it a little bit. I'm going to be pulling it forward a little bit because I want the uh, pull of the of the axe to be a little bit thicker so I want about a quarter of an inch there and then three sixteenths on either side whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm hammering it out I'm gonna get the uh, forge kick back on and get this back into the fire
Try some. So you, as you can see, just like putting that small amount of flux on that little hairline crack, it pulled it right out. You have to get the, uh, the steel up to welding temperature to do that. It's got to be almost white hot. It's almost to the point where the steel is going to start melting on its own. But uh, you put the, the flux in there and it, and it turned out to be a superficial crack, but it puts my mind at ease because now I know it's not going to go all the way through, especially when you start spreading the cheeks out for the eye so that took care of that little that little crack right away I'm gonna start uh, working on the eye a little bit now because it's just about where I need it what I'm doing now is I'm letting the spike get hot enough to where I can bring it out of the fire and then clamp it to my anvil and hopefully I'll still have enough time to be able to chisel into the head I need to start that and you have to make sure that it's uh, lined up exactly if you're if you start to punch out the eye and it's off by just a little bit it's going to get more and more exaggerated as you push that eye out Looks like I still got some heat left in it. Let's start punching this thing out. My anvil's curved. This is going to be a pain in the butt. So I thought clamping down to the railroad track would be a pretty good idea to keep the spike in place while I was uh, hammering the eye into the axe. But what I think I'm going to end up doing is reverting back to my old trusty eye beam so that I have enough meat to get that clamp around. We'll see how it works out. Um, I'm just kind of playing this one by ear. I've never done one of these before. I've never had to punch out a hole like this uh, so asymmetrically on an axe. So. I'm going to give this a shot and uh, see if that works any better. That does look like it's working out a little bit better. Problem is it just takes a minute to clamp it down so I don't have a whole lot of hammering time. What I'm doing now is I've gone about a quarter of the way down on that side. So I want to come at it from the top now. The, I've already got the bottom lug. So I'm going to dip the lug into water to harden it right there. So when I clamp it down, I'm not going to be malforming it at all because it's already the shape that I want it. And if I hammer it against the uh, other side, it's going to start flattening that out. And I don't want that. I just want to manipulate this side. And then hopefully I'll meet in the middle. I'm going to have to re-harden my chisel after this. It's turning the same color as the, as the uh, spike. So I made it all the way through, but I'm not out of the woods yet. You can see it kind of got uh, misshapen as I was going through and uh, punching that eye through. 
It still has the basic shape that I need, but uh, I will have to work that. I'm gonna put this on a mandrel and start hammering it and uh, getting everything as symmetrical as I can on the mandrel. So I made things easy on myself and I just went and I bought a handle. As, uh, if I was gonna go and make a handle, that would be a whole video on its own. But because I bought this one, I know what I'm looking for, I need to punch that eye out to that size. The closer I get to that size, the tighter it's gonna be. So I need to find a way to make, uh, make the eye oval so that it fits directly over this, or I can shape this into a circle. Uh, working the wood down into a circle might be a little bit easier. And I'm also not gonna use the whole handle. I'm actually planning on cutting it off about there and then using this other side for a different project. So the first mandrel that I'm going to be using is this uh, concrete form spike that I had laying around. And uh, all I did is I just gave it a little bit more gradual of a taper. Uh, when they start out, it's a very abrupt taper that's on it, and that's not going to work out for trying to form that eye in there. So I just took it to the belt sander real quick and gave it a more gradual taper. I'm going to uh, strap that to the anvil and then start hammering it down on that so that it opens it up. As I'm punching this out, something that I didn't anticipate, but I probably should have, is... One side of the eye was a little bit thinner than the other. So as I'm trying to punch it, it's blowing out that side because it's a little bit weaker. Uh, what I'm going to need to do to remedy this is as I go further and punch it further, I'll need to dip this side in water so that it's not malleable. And then I'll punch it through to try to blow this other side out and uh, make it symmetrical. So I got it all the way around the first mandrel, and as I'm looking at it, the cheeks are already a little bit thinner than I wanted. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is just rethink the handle. That uh, 5 8 maybe 3 quarters that it is right there is gonna be where it's gonna stay. I don't want the cheeks any thinner than that. So I, at this point, I'm gonna start working the rest, drawing it out uh, the way that I need it to, and then I'll start shaping the pole and the cheeks a little bit more but uh, I'm gonna do something different with the handle because I don't. I it's not gonna be very sturdy. This is like I said. This is the first time that I'm going through this, and it's a it's a cool project. But it's actually taken on a ton of charcoal. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna work on that anymore. I, there, I've got too much more to do on the rest of it. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now and then start drawing the rest of it out. I'm pretty precise with my hammer swing, if I do say so. But I'd rather err on the side of caution. I'm dunking my eye every time before I start thinning out the neck of this because I don't want to miss and hit this thing and malform it. Oh my gosh, this part is so much easier. I, I much enjoy doing the blade over anything else. That eye, it took me about three buckets full of charcoal to do, and already I'm working the blade down. That took me two heats. This is, the rest of this is gonna go pretty fast. I think uh, we're over the hump now. So I'm just gonna keep working this down. I wanna give it a little bit of a curve up, and then I'll bring the beard all the way down. It's already going pretty quick. We're almost there. So much of forging is just waiting around. All right, I've got the whole thing the same thickness, so now I'm gonna start giving it that bend down.
Well, I've got the general shape that I was looking for. That's almost exactly what I wanted, but uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a point up here and I'm gonna taper this whole edge. That's really where we are at the end of today. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results on it so far. I'm just, I'm gonna call it today because it's getting late. Um, I could stand to straighten it out a little bit more. It's uh, just a little bit off, but I'm gonna straighten it and then uh, I'm actually gonna work on grinding it, start putting the uh, bevel for the edge and uh, maybe making it a little bit more pointy at the bottom. But uh, this one's shaping up. We're, uh, we're getting there on this one. This has been a pretty fun project so far. Hey gang, so I put the Viking Axe project down for a minute because uh, I was just kind of tired of it and it also gave me a chance to replenish my charcoal supply. It's, uh, I just used a ton of charcoal trying to put that eye into it. Uh, but here I am back again. I'm going to start working on it a little bit more. There's actually not a whole lot left to do on it. Um, I do think I uh, want to push the eye out a little bit more. I've been kind of back and forth uh, on whether uh, or not I should do that because it's already getting so thin. But um, <clears throat> I'm also looking at the handle that I got for it, and I'm kind of shaping it, giving it uh, little finger holes through it, and then working down the head a bit a little bit where I'm going to put it in. And by the time I get this down to where it'll fit into here I I don't, I don't know how strong it's gonna be I don't know how durable it's gonna be so I'm gonna hit this a couple more times and I'm gonna give it a little bit more accent you can see the uh, the bit on the axe is still pretty thick so I kind of want to give more of that a taper and uh, straighten it out just kind of clean it up a little bit uh, so I'm gonna kick up the forge and get that going and uh, hopefully by the time that's done, I'll have decided whether or not I'm going to blow that whole, that uh, eye out anymore. Let's get going. The more I taper it with the hammer, the less I'm going to have to do on the belt sander when I'm trying to bevel it. So I'm making it easier on myself now by just hammering that, uh, that bevel into there as much as I can. All right, I think I'm done with this bit now. I like it the way that it is. I gave it a little bit extra flare coming up, a little bit of accent right there. I'll probably exaggerate that a little bit more by bringing that down with the uh, belt sander, but uh, the overall shape is good. It's all straight, and I've got it beveled there uh, about where I want it <clears throat> so that uh, I can start working it on this stone. But uh, before I harden it, I still have this pesky, pesky eye problem to deal with. <clears throat> what I think I'm going to do first and foremost is whenever I was punching this uh, eye out, I smashed the lug down. And uh, I don't like it where it is right there. So I'm, I think I'm gonna heat the eye back up. What I'll do is I'll put it on the mandrel and then I'll hammer the edges down while it's on the mandrel. And uh, I can actually go both ways with that. On uh, old Viking axes, uh, the, uh, the, the real Viking axes, what they used to do is they would put these things on the top and bottom. They were called uh, langettes. And that would give the axe stability on the, on the handle because it sticks up at either side and uh, it keeps it from moving back and forth or back and forth to and fro either way. So I think I'm going to hammer out both the sides a little bit more just to give it a little bit more stability. And then uh, once I get all that where I want it, then I'll harden the bit. In the meantime, I'm going to be shaping the handle a little bit more. You can see I'm starting to put uh, finger grooves in the bottom of it, give it a nice grip at the bottom. And uh, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm just rolling it over the top uh, the belt sander to do that give that little mark in there do a little bit more I think I'm gonna shape it down on this side and then maybe a little bit on the back side of it to make it kind of uh, curve over so I'm gonna do that while my uh, while my axe head is heating up Yeah. 
having those little finger notches in there that feels good and it looks awesome too check it boom one thing i will say and i've learned from doing woodworking for a few years uh using power tools on wood is a good way to mess your stuff up it works it so fast that uh, a lot of times you'll find that you don't know where you made your mistakes at so unless you've really used power tools on wood before i wouldn't really recommend doing that uh use hand tools it's uh it's a lot finer and you can uh you can take special note of the way that you're working the wood i've got to bring the forge through the door a little bit because it's pouring outside there's a there's a one inch pool collected where my forge usually sits I'm gonna use the ball peen for this, a little bit more precise. actually not working out at all like I expected. <clears throat> I'm going to keep working it a little bit to see if I can draw it down a little bit more, but it's pretty much exactly where it was before. Might be a lost cause on the lug on this one. So I worked the, that lug a little bit and there's just simply not enough seal there to pull it down. I can't really draw it out that much more. Uh, that's okay though. You win some, you lose some. Uh, it's not going to really mess with it. All, all I'll have to do is get the uh, axe handle a little bit more uh, tight than it usually would be. And I don't think that I'll really compromise that much, uh, that much stability in it. Uh, and I'm not going to be driving it through an Englishman's armor over and over. So I'm not going to really need to worry about it too much. But uh, I thought that just pushing the eye through the head of the railroad spike would make it easier and it didn't end up uh, most of the time what you do in an axe is you draw it all the way flat and then you fold it over and then you forge weld your two lips together but uh, I thought that put, punching a hole straight through might make it easier and it really didn't end up doing that so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits on that eye right now uh, I'll harden the blade now I'm gonna go ahead and harden that edge the bit and uh, I'll shape it a little bit, and I'll keep working on the axe handle, then I'll throw that on there. Once it gets uh, cleaned up, we'll see what it looks like. Once you harden it up, you can tell just by the color of the steel whether or not it's ready to go. And that guy is ready to go. Bring it out of the oil, and I can tell that by the how much smoke is coming off of it, whether or not it's it's done quenching. Pull it out. The first time you saw the smoke just pouring off of it. Now there's next to none. Okie doke. Now that I'm done with the meat, 
of the shaping. I'm gonna polish this guy up a little bit more with the wire wheel, trusty wire wheel. So I started to clean that up a little bit with the wire wheel, but I'm deciding against doing it that way because uh, I need to work so much of this anyway. I need to work so much, so much of it down. There's a lot of hammer marks and stuff all over the place, so I'm just gonna do it with the belt sander instead. I'm just gonna move over to the belt sander and start uh, taking some real meat out of this. After just a little bit of time with the uh, wire wheel and the belt sander, you can kind of see what I'm going for there. I'm gonna polish up the whole thing because I plan on uh, decorating it a lot more. And then I also uh, decided to give it some little mini lingettes on either side by using the top of the belt sander to just kind of uh, make those little curves there. Just a little bit of accent to make it look uh, look kind of trick. Uh, a little bit more time and uh, I'll be ready to move on to the next step. I'm just going to clean up all these hammer marks that are uh, all up and down the blade. I want to get the blade nice and flat and uh, I need to work that edge over too. As I was looking at it, I thought it was straight whenever I was done hammering it and I hardened it, but I'm looking down the center of it and it, it S's back and forth. But at least I left myself enough steel to where I can work the high spots on each side and it'll be nice and straight. In the Just about done with it there. That's looking like I like. I'm gonna hit the edges a little bit with a Dremel some more. Plus, like right in here, I couldn't I couldn't reach in there with a belt sander. So I'm going to uh, hit in there with the Dremel also to uh, take all those little bumps out of there. Uh, I need to smooth it out just a bit more. I'm gonna give it a nice uh, flat edge because I plan on etching this bad boy and it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna use this little grinding wheel on the Dremel to get into these spots. That took pretty good care of it and I'm happy with that. Okay, now I'm starting to work the head down onto the handle. And you'll see I put a kind of gradual swoop into the handle just to give it a little bit more flair. But that is what that looks like. I'm just going to pop it a couple more times with the hammer. I just want to close that gap all the way before I call it good. I need it snug on there. And it's uh, filling in all these gaps around the outside too and doing that. Now I'm going to shave the top off of this uh, handle with the angle grinder. I know it's the wrong tool, but it's going to make quick work of it. And uh, I'm pretty delicate with the angle grinder. Perfect. Now it's uh, shaped exactly with the langettes. Now I'm going to just drive this little wedge that it came with into there and we'll be finished with this part. Snug as a bug in a rug. That guy's not going to go anywhere. I'm confident. Let's check it out. Yep, that works. That's a tough little axe right there. <laughs> but Marshall, does it work? Of course it does. Now that was a fun project. Uh, like I said, definitely a pain in the butt putting the eye through there like that. Uh, if I was going to do it all over again, I just wouldn't do it that method. I'd use the method of folding it over like everybody else does. But uh, all in all, I don't regret it. Uh, I still have the etching to do on it, and that'll be on the next episode. 
So like, subscribe, tell your friends, and let's keep knowing some stuff.